So you want to perform a VLOOKUP across multiple sheets. I've got three sheets in this workbook, sales. Within the sales sheet, I have a branch column, which I want to cross-reference with this region sheet to borrow the region for each branch. And then I've also got a product column, which I want to cross-reference with the product category sheet to borrow the product category. So I'm gonna have two columns here, region, and category. And I need to get that information from these other sheets. I'll just borrow that formatting to apply it to the region heading there. Okay, so let's start with region, VLOOKUP. The lookup value is the value in this table, the table where you're writing a VLOOKUP, you're cross-referencing on another sheet. So that's my lookup value, comma. Table array, is the table you're borrowing information from. So that's on the regions sheet. So you click down here on the region sheet and you need to select this table. You don't need the column headings. So what I would do is I'd select the first record and then use the key combination, control shift down arrow key. That'll select down to the last row in the table. And if you look up here in the formula bar, you can see how Excel refers to a range on another sheet. You have the sheet name followed by an exclamation mark, followed by the range that you've selected. Now we need to lock that range. And we do that by pressing the F4 key at the top of our keyboard, and that puts those dollars in that range reference. Now if F4 hasn't worked for you, you can type the dollars in as I've got them there. Right, then I put a comma in, and the next argument is col index number. Now the col index number is the position of the column within your table array that contains the values you want to borrow. We want to borrow the region and that's in the second column of the table array. So we put in a two. The last argument asks whether we're doing an approximate match or an exact match. And we're looking for an exact match with these branch names. So you need to select this option, which is false, or you can put a zero in. Close the bracket, press enter, and you have your region for the first branch. And if I double click here, it will copy that formula down and give me the region for the other branches. Let's do the same for category, VLOOKUP. So lookup value this time is the product name, comma. The table array is on the product category sheet. So I select that sheet. And again, I select the first record. Control shift down arrow key. F4 to lock the table array reference. Comma, call index number is two again because the category is in the second column of my table array and it's zero or false for the last argument. Close the bracket, press enter. I get the category for this product, double click and it copies that formula down. Now there are some tips and tricks I can show you, which may make this process slightly easier for you. So I'm just gonna delete all those formulas. One tip is to name your table arrays. So for example, I'm on the region sheet and I'm gonna select this whole table. And to do that, I just click in any cell and then control A on my keyboard. Then, I can click in the name box, and the name box is to the left of the formula bar. And currently it will show the address of the active cell, which is A4. Now what you can do in here is give this table a name. So I'm gonna call it region. Can't have a space in a name and it can't start with a number. But I need to press enter after I type that name in. And then let's see how we can use that name. So I'll do my VLOOKUP again. I'm looking up this branch comma, and what I can do, instead of having to switch over to the regions sheet, which can be slightly awkward, I can type in that name I gave that table, and you can see it appears there in the IntelliSense list. So I'll double click on it. I don't need to lock it with dollars or anything, because a named reference is an absolute reference by default, comma, call index number. Now, I would need to know the call index number, and from memory, that's two. I'm trying to avoid switching to the other sheet, so you do need to remember the call index number, comma, and your last argument is either false or zero. So I'll put a zero in, close the bracket, press enter. 
So I can copy that down and you can see it works. So I like that method because I don't have to switch between sheets when I'm writing my VLOOKUP. Let's try it for the categories table. So if I just go back up to the top, I want to control A to select the whole table. If I use control backspace, that'll take me back to the top again. And then I'm going to give the table a name. So I click in the name box and I'll call this categories and press enter to store it. Go back to my sales sheet and I'm just going to scroll over a little bit. So V lookup, lookup value is the product name, comma, table array. So I call that category. So I just start typing it in and there it is in the IntelliSense list, double click. Comma, call index number you do need to know, that's two. Comma, range lookup is false or zero. So I put in a zero, close the bracket, press enter, copy the formula down. Okay, so next I'm going to show you a third method, which I believe is even better than the two methods that we've looked at so far. I'll delete all those formulas. Now I'm actually going to get rid of the names that we've already created. You can do that by going to formulas name manager and that'll list your names i'm just going to delete both of those and close now this time i'm going to house each of these data sets in an excel table so to do that i'm going to click somewhere in the data on the sales sheet and use the shortcut key control t it'll give you this little dialog box and you just need to click on ok here and you then get a table design tab on your ribbon and you can give the table a name. So I'm going to call this one sales. And then I'm going to do the same for product categories. So I click anywhere in the data, control T, click on OK. And I'll call this categories. Press enter to confirm. Again, you can't have spaces in a table name. Go to regions, do the same thing, control T. And I'll call this regions. Now, if I go back to sales, how would I use these tables? Well, equals V lookup. My lookup value is the branch. Now, you can see that now I'm in a table, it refers to that cell in a different way. It hasn't given a cell reference, as in B2, it's given the name of the column at branch. So that's just a different way that the table uses to refer to a cell. Comma, table array. So this would be region, and I can type that in, just like I typed the name in for the named reference that we used earlier on. But here we have a table name. So I double click, comma, call index number is two, I'd need to know that, comma, and I'm doing an exact match, so that would be zero. I'll close the bracket, press enter. And it works in the same way as the named reference that we used earlier on. So why am I showing you these two different methods when they seem to do exactly the same thing? Well, the advantage of using a table is it creates a dynamic range. So for example, if I added a, another branch to this list, let's say Chichester, and I put that in the south, you'll probably notice that the formatting is applied to the new record. And that's because the table is automatically incorporating that new row. So if I went back to the sales sheet and go to the bottom of this table, added a new record, if I wrote Chichester in here, you can see that it automatically picks up that new branch and gives it the new region. So the VLOOKUP is able to see that new entry in my regions table. Let's do the same thing for the categories. Just scroll over a little bit. So equals V lookup. I'm looking up the product name in the table array that I've called categories. Call index number is two. And range lookup is false or zero. So I can copy this down. If I added another product to this categories list,
and then added a record to the sales sheet. I'll just write M and S pepper pot in here. You can see that over here in the category column, it's automatically picked it up. And that's because the product categories are within an Excel table that creates a dynamic range, one that automatically expands as you add new records or indeed columns. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.